Simple spelling, G-O-D. Same word backwards, D-O-G. <laughs> they would stay with me all day. I'm the one who walks away. Don't walk away. <laughs> but both of them just wait for me and dance at my return with glee. Both love me no matter what, divine god and canine mutt. <laughs> I take it hard each time I fail, but God just loves dog wags his tail. God thought up and made the dog. Dog reflects a part of God. I've seen love from both sides now. It's everywhere. Amen. Bow, wow. I look up and I see God. I look down and see these dogs. And in my human frailty, I can't match their love for me. God thought up and made the dog. Dog reflects a part of God. I've seen love from both sides now. It's everywhere. Amen. Wow. Who wants bacon? You know, I am so grateful to Kathy Ann for uh, continuing to invite me um, to be with you. But this morning, you know, I'm kind of reminded of that old-timey um, comedian who said he would never share a stage with children or animals. <laughs> and so um, I, uh, I don't know if my talk is fascinating enough to... Um, uh, to not have these little fur balls be more fascinating, but we'll see. So uh, the uh, theme for this month, and by the way, I, th I think you probably know that many, many, many of the CSLs around the world are following the same thematic structure for the whole year. Um, and so I also am speaking about kinship with all of life. And so I brought this um, wonderful... Uh, image that just shows the land and the seas and the winged ones and the swimmers and the four-leggeds and just to remind us that this is this is family you know we it's not us and them it's all us here and um, another thing as I kind of lead up to my title which is the mind of the mother knows how any of you who have heard me before know that um, as old and earthy as I can get uh, to bring forth spiritual tradition, that's what I like to do. So if we go back to the beginnings of any religion, really, on this planet, um, the wisdom traditions began with people relating to the natural world, relating to the weather, relating to the rain and the snow and the glaciers and, and the struggle of how to live on the land and have the land prosper uh, the people and the four-leggeds as well. So religion was really started with uh, our ancestors trying to figure out how to appease who's ever in charge of the weather so that it could be um, supportive enough to grow the crops so that everybody could live one more year. And what we found was that uh, this entity, this energy, seemed to be feminine for most of our ancestors because um, the young of every species comes from the female of the species and the new growth comes out of what they refer to as Mother Earth. And so the first deities really were goddesses. 
And um, we have a lot of evidence of that in caves, these wonderful little goddess um, carvings that people could hold in their hands. So the Divine Mother was the first thing that we worshipped. And then as um, uh, civilization began, uh, the gods also came into the equation. And so we had gods and goddesses. And there were archetypes involved with each one of these. Um, and the feminine of the archetypes mostly were nurturing and loving and caring for. And the archetypes of the masculine mostly were protective and going forth. And so you've got the arrow that's the masculine and you've got the cup that is the feminine. And so the, these, this dichotomy has come down to us really through every wisdom tradition, although some of it is hidden. You know, even in Christianity, you've got God the Father, but you got Mary there, and Mary really knows what's going on. So in Science of Mind, our, our wisdom tradition, we also have the divine masculine and the divine feminine, although it's usually not called that. But in the creative process, as you study it in your Beyond Limits class, there is what you'll see as I describe it, the divine masculine and the divine feminine. So because I'm talking about the mind of the mother today, I want to start with that. Um, so in the textbook, it's called the subjective mind. That's one of those things that I never actually speak that word very much, except um, today I will, because it, it is the divine feminine as far as our wisdom tradition goes. In the textbook on page 29, it says, in the subjective mind of all of us, we find a law obeying our word, the servant of spirit. It is the mental law of our being and the creative factor within us. So this is what has evolved from the goddesses into science of mind. The subjective mind, the law, that which creates, the maker, all of that is within the feminine archetype. The masculine archetype is that which, um, when we speak our word, when we choose, <coughs> when we um, decide, when we say, I want some more of this, or I accept some more of this, that is the word going forth. The word going forth is the divine masculine, and then the making of that substance or, or the experience which corresponds to our word is the divine feminine. You got it? Isn't that a nice thing to kind of bring? I like, I love that stuff. So that's why I talk about it. So, so when, when in the Bible it says, um, God said, God the Father said, let there be light, and it was made it was made by the divine maker, or the law, or universal subjective mind, or the divine feminine. And when we say, I choose this healing in my life, then that is us speaking forth our word, and then it is the divine feminine who makes it. When you think about it, we can't make anything. We try to fix things sometimes. We try to fix things by moving or changing jobs or doing something in the outer when some, when some experience in the outer doesn't suit us. But as you take these classes, I know Kathy Ann tells you, bring it back to thought. You have to have a new thought. You have to have a new consciousness. You have to start from within. You can't maneuver things out here and have anything happen because that's not our job. That's the job of the Divine Mother. So the mind of the Mother, which is what we're talking about today, is creation itself. <coughs> the Divine Mother knows how to take two little packages of DNA and make a baby. And the Divine Mother knows how to take two other little packages of DNA and make a puppy. 
like she did so many times today. Um, or the Divine Mother knows how to take a little package of an idea and make it into a new experience for us. So the mind of the mother knows how to make anything. And it's important for us to realize what is our part in creation and what is her part in creation. Yes, that's true. Our part in creation is to say what, what is to be created. And then we leave the how to her. We do not need to tell her how. In fact, we cannot tell her how. We don't know how. We leave it to that maker of everything to create that which we have called forth. So in the textbook, Ernest Holmes says, spirit in some inner act upon itself takes a thought and makes a corresponding thing or experience. And the, the one who makes it, at least today, we are calling the Divine Mother. So in my studies, in my um, curiosity, I wanted to know what happens there. What, what is that inner act upon itself that that's all Ernest could call it, an inner act? What is that inner act? How does it come from an idea and then you have a thing. How does that happen? So one of the wonderful stories that I came across in my meanderings around the world, actually, um, comes from Findhorn, Scotland. Findhorn is a retreat facility now. But in the 50s, the 1950s, very recently, it was nothing. It was a sandy piece of beach on north East Scotland that has a lot of wind and nothing else really, uh, sand and wind. So in the 1950s there was a family, the Caddy family, and the Caddy family had three sons and um, husband and wife and a friend. And this little family group was in dire straits because Mr. Caddy had lost his job and so there was no money. There was, they were destitute. And so they, they left their home, and they purchased a tiny little trailer. And they parked their tiny little trailer on this sandy piece of northeastern Scotland, and they prayed like crazy, I imagine. Um, not in desperation, though, because these, especially the women, were very, very... Um, sensitive to uh, the spiritual realm. So they planted a little vegetable garden because they had to have something to eat, and they planted it in the sand, which has no nutrients in it, but they did that nonetheless, and these little seedlings came up, and they, they were praying in their garden one day, this eensy little garden that was making them dinner, they hoped, and they heard what they thought was a message from the little baby pea plants. And the pea plants said, we would like to be thinned out a little. We feel a little crowded. And so they did it. And then the next day, the pea plant said, we would like a little fertilizer. And so what you do is you take a cow pie from across the road and you soak it in water and then give us that water. We'd like that. And they did it. And then the carrots started talking to them. And, and pretty much they followed the direction of what they called the deva of each species. The deva of each species would tell them what they wanted and what happened in the not distant past was a miracle because they grew vegetables that were larger than any vegetables should have been in good soil. They grew gigantic cabbages gigantic carrots, and they invited their friends to come and look at their gigantic vegetables, and then the news media came, and the horticulturalists from all over Britain came, and all of this was documented. It's, you can Google this and find out all about it, 
And what they said was, what happened? We listened. We listened to the davas of the plants. And what the davas of the plants told them was to build a retreat facility and to teach the kinship of all life, to teach our oneness with all species, and how to live comfortably together on Earth. So back now to what happens between idea and form. I'm going to read to you the dictation of the apple deva. This is the spiritual uh, manager of the apple trees. This is what they said to the Caddy family. You feel drawn to us by the clustered blossom and the promise of fruit to come that from a fragile, scarcely colored, and short-lived bloom, a sturdy, rosy apple appears, is but one of God's miracles enacted many times over for all to observe. If you could see more of how this is brought about by the chain of life, wonder would lift you high. As from a seed, a tree grows, so from the seed idea, a pattern issues forth from the center, passed on by silent ranks of angels, silent and still, because that idea is still too unformed and unfixed to endure any but the most exacting care. Then the pattern is passed on to the elements, the makers of form. They give of themselves to clothe that pattern. When, at the appropriate opportunity, through the ministrations of the nature spirits, it appears in time and place, this is the word made flesh. This is all creation, held in balance by great layers of life, of which your conscious mind is unaware. You, man, have the fruits, although you do only a small part of the work. May your praise be greater than ours, which never ceases. Now, whether there are devas and angels and elementals and nature spirits that take an idea and make it into a tree or an apple, I don't, I, I don't care what you call it, but there are levels of manifestation that do the work for us. And that is the working of the Divine Mother. Somehow, from idea, it solidifies into the thing. And that process happens for us. It's like in the book of Job, it says, Thou shalt decree a thing, and it will be established for you. That's how it happens. So we have the choice of when we're saying our what. To have that what come from an ego place or from a universal place. The ego place is what happens to a lot of people that come into this philosophy for the first time, and it's almost like a spell. Oh, my God, we get to create what we want? Oh. And you do the spiritual mind treatment, and you get through the first two steps, and then step three, there's this list of things that, that you want. You know, I want a red car, I want a boyfriend, all that. And, um, and when we respect the mind of the mother and how creation is made, and how we are all, all here together, all kin, all family together. Maybe a better question would be not, what do I want, but what wants to happen here? What wants to happen here? Um, David Spangler, who spent 10 years at Fintorn, wrote a book called The Laws of Manifestation. It's fabulous. And he says, it's the difference between standing outside a system and acting upon it, imposing your will upon it, and standing within a system as part of it and changing it by becoming an active part of its will. He later goes on to say, think like a planet. And what I want to say today is if we all thought like a dog, uh, 
we would have world peace. <laughs> you know, if you say, what, what does the dog want in the system in which a dog lives? A dog wants love, a dog wants a job to do, and a dog wants connection with its people. That's it. What if, what if that were the basis of all our prayers? May I be a loving presence, may I do my job well, and may I connect to those that are mine. What a fabulous, fabulous way to think about manifesting and creating and using the mind of the Father, which says the what, and giving thanks for the mind of the mother who knows the how. That, it's so simple. We just say what, and then we wait. We wait upon the law. In the Bible, it says wait upon the Lord, but we wait upon the law. And then throughout this whole system of saying and waiting, we are grateful. We are grateful before, during, and after the manifestation. And the manifesting is, okay, I'm about, I'm about done, I think. I think, I think we've, I have hit the wall. They are not going to be content anymore. So we're going to move right now into the blessing. So that, that, that's, that was the message. That's it. So, <laughs> That was, that was so sweet. It was like, okay, they're not listening anymore. Okay. So let me tell you how we're going to do this now because in a moment, many of you are going to get up. So what's going to happen is that we are going to do a number of things about blessing. We're going to uh, bless the animals, bless the animals' people, and, uh, and then we're going to receive a blessing from the animals. So... When it's time to move, those of you with animals, come up and line up all along the apron of the stage here. You're welcome to come up on the stage as well as stand in front of the stage. And there's enough of you that probably the animal pe people, the animals and the people, are going to come out to, to our back here. Then some of you without animals that want to be a part of the blessing circle because I want to enclose the animals, you come up on stage back here. No animals back here, but people who do the blessing back here. And then those of you that want to receive a blessing from an animal as they come up and you look and you get a little vibe about which one you want to have bless you, then you line up kind of in front of that doggy, okay? So let's see how this goes. Okay, come on up. <laughs> oh. I want to, oh gosh, what happy chaos. Um, I, want, I want to um, feel the love that is right here. And I mean, it is really amazing. And the first thing I want us to do together is to call the names of those um, beloved pets that have gone on, that have gone over the Rainbow Bridge. Just, oh, oh yeah. Call them in by name right now. Okay, so Aphrodite and Nikki. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and really feel them, you know? It's like they, they're right here with us. 
So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to bless the animals. And uh, so I'm going to say a few words of blessing, and then we're all going to repeat the blessing. So I, I want to just acknowledge the amazing selfless love that comes from these um, four-leggeds, that their joy and their humor uh, and the God and the goddess that is in each one of these is completely sacred. The face of God is all around me. Oh my goodness, it's so sweet. So would you re please repeat after me? I bless you. I honor you. I, honor you. I, thank you. I thank you. I am better because you are in the world. Oh, and that is so true. Now we're going to bless the animals, peoples. So I want to acknowledge you um, by giving. You have given your life. You have given your support. You have been up nights just like with a baby. You've cleaned up spit up just like with a baby. Um, you have received tender gifts every single day. And so um, we see you as kinder and more centered than uh, if you didn't have these beautiful, beautiful four-leggeds. And so we bless you. So repeat after me if you would. I bless you. I honor, you. I honor you. I thank you. The world is better because of the love between you and your four-legged. And now is the time for everybody to come and receive a blessing from these precious beings. And um, so we'll have a little music in the background. Just come up, look into their eyes, see the face of God, receive the blessing. Look at you. Such a good doggy. Just for the close here, I want you to feel how it feels in this room now. And, um, you know, although I love to talk, it didn't feel like this when I was talking. This talking is in our head, and this is in our heart. This is what's going to bring peace on earth. So, blessed be. I love you.